I have before me the latest Lenovo Yoga 9i Gen 7 with the latest i7-1260P CPU from Intel. Finally got those more cores and more threads. So we're gonna be jumping into the performance benchmarks later in this video. Now to check out the improvements of the latest model, I've pulled out last year's model, the Lenovo Yoga 9i. This is the C950 with last year's i7-1165G7 CPU. Still a fantastic laptop. I use this as my daily driver for handling all the business aspects of my channel. So let's jump into the key differences between these two models so you can see what really stands out about the latest iteration of the Lenovo Yoga 9i. Now, first and foremost, the biggest standout feature to me is going to be the larger 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. It just gives you that little bit of extra screen real estate vertically, which for me makes it so much more breathable. When I first switched over to 16 by 10 aspect ratio screens, I was shocked at how much of a difference it made. Even when just working in say like Google Docs or you know editing my benchmark slides or handling emails, it just gives that little bit of extra real estate to make it more of an enjoyable experience on a smaller screen. Now, if you're on a bigger screen, say like a 15 or a 17 inch screen, that taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio doesn't really make as noticeable of a difference until you go down to a smaller screen like a 14 or 13 inch screen. So I definitely think that was a big improvement and a great move on Lenovo's part. Now, the interesting thing about these two laptops is that they kept the same design in the webcam bezel and in the speaker. They really held true to what worked great with the Yoga 9i and brought that into the new model. So as you can see, we have this little pop-up notch here that happens on both models. You have the manual cutoff switch for the webcam. And then coming down to the bottom of the screen, you have this really nice Bowers and Wilkins speaker that produces great audio and pushes it towards you while you're working on your laptop. And so you can check out and hear that how that sounds. Here's a quick audio sample of both models for you. Now, as we have the laptops open, let's take a look at the keyboard decks. Now, first and foremost, as you can see, they've added an array of keys on the right side of the keyboard. I love this. You can quickly jump into performance mode. You can blur your background in a video call. You can go ahead and switch from light mode to dark mode right from your keyboard deck on the screen. So you click that and it just switches you to dark mode. It's just very convenient. I like how they've added very useful keys that I would find myself using on a day-to-day -day workflow. Now, the next thing that you'll notice is the massive trackpad compared terribly to last year's model. If you're an on-the-go creator, that larger trackpad is a no-brainer. It's just so much easier to work on the go with a larger trackpad rather than being scrunched with a small trackpad. Big improvement, hat off to Lenovo for making that big upgrade. I'm super stoked. This is becoming a fantastic creator laptop. This had the performance we needed, but it was missing a few key features. Like I said, the screen felt small, the trackpad was small. And so these two improvements overall have made a big difference in my book for recommending this laptop to say designers, artists, photographers, uh, and even coming up in the benchmarks, some video editors. I am, I'm excited to check out the benchmarks here really soon. I just wanna get through a few more quick features uh, that are different from last year's model to this year's model. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these laptops, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is the build quality. So let's go ahead and see if we can open and close each of these laptops with one hand. Spread them out a little bit there. So both open a little tight with one hand. So this, Newer model allows you to open a little more and the older model kind of, you know, drags away. So two-handed open for both of them, if I'm gonna be totally honest. Um, it just, when you try and get them open, it you just end up picking up. So two-handed open for these models. Now let's go ahead and check out the screen flex. 
The screen flex on the latest model is almost non-existent compared to the older model. The older model is really good too. So screen flex is great on both these models, which means strong, rigid build, good build quality, which makes me happy with these laptops. Now, let's go ahead and check out the bottom cover. The bottom cover of last year's laptop was fit very nicely into the side panels. Great build quality here, really good assembly. And then as we check out the newer model, same thing. Love the build quality of this. The bottom panel is fit so nicely into the side panels. But one difference between last year's model and this year's model that really stands out to me is they've gone with these really nice rounded edges. So as you see on the newer model here in my left hand versus the older model in my right hand, they have these really nice rounded edges. It's a very nice design change. I like the difference. It feels really good in your hand. Uh, this one kind of feels a little sharp sometimes when you grab it, where the latest model is very comfortable to hold. It doesn't have any sharpness. It's just... It's smooth, I like that. Now, one thing that I really liked about last year's model that they did not do for this year's model was they nestled the pen into the chassis. So you see, I can pull the pen out right here. That is awesome. And it's kind of unfortunate that they didn't do this in the new model because it looks like they would have had space. If you look, the spot where the pen would have gone in for the newer model is actually slightly thicker. Um, so I kind of wish they would have done that for the newer model. However, they do send you with this handy dandy case, really nice recycled materials case, and your pen is uh, right there. So it's a good alternative. It gives you a thicker pen, and I would say that'd be the bigger benefit to me. I don't like these little itty bitty pens. So let me show you. Like, look how small that pen is, right? Like that is tiny. It's a trade-off that I'm willing to make, this bigger pen. This just feels much nicer in your hand. It's gonna give you a much better drawing experience compared to this little tiny, like almost like a little tiny stylus. It's almost like, a, you know, remember those Palm Pilots back in the day? It's almost like a Palm Pilot pen. So it just, it just feels, it just doesn't get a good grip. Where the newer pen is a nice, strong, durable aluminum pen. Where the new pen, it's a nice aluminum pen, feels durable. I don't feel like if my like you know kid gets it, he's gonna snap it. This thing, I'm like, oh man, my child could snap that in a heartbeat. Um, where this is gonna give you a much smoother, much more enjoyable drawing experience. Now, if you don't use the pen much, I guess it would make sense that you would wanna have it just kind of on the go here and there. But then again, if you don't use the pen much, why are you getting a laptop with a touchscreen and a pen? So to me, the pen is important and they've given us an alternative, which is to put it in the sleeve instead of in the computer and give us a better pen. As far as the pressure sensitivity is concerned, it's on par. You do those nice thin lines if you're lightly touching it, and then as you press harder, it thickens up that line, say in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, and so the pen is good quality. Now before we move forward, there's a few tests I always like to do. That is typing on the keyboard and using the trackpad, as well as seeing a sample of the webcam. So here you go, you can check out those two tests for each of the laptops. Here is the webcam on the Lenovo Yoga 9i and a little audio sample for you as well. Here is the webcam for the Yoga 9i and then as I click the blur background button right on the keyboard, immediately just blurs it out. Really nice feature right there on your keyboard deck and a little audio sample so you can hear what the microphone sounds like. As far as the weight and thickness is concerned, they're almost identical. The newer Yoga 9i seems to be slightly thicker just ever so slightly but the weight is is almost unnoticeably different now as far as the ports are concerned we have slight differences here from the new model to the old model you can see we have two USB type C's and USB type A but then we have the headphone jack on the left side panel for the older model but as we switch over to the right side panel you can see that all we have is the power button on the older model where on the newer model we have an extra USB type C and then we have our headphone jack and our power button. So you get an extra USB type C with the newer model. Yeah, let's go.
Now, as far as ventilation is concerned, you can see they have the exact same ventilation. It's gonna have a vent along the bottom cover, and then it's gonna push air also out of the keyboard deck. So very similar there as well. All right, without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. I'm gonna have the actual specs of the laptops coming up on the screen now. Very similar laptops in regards to the way they are configured outside of the latest CPU. I'm excited about that one. Gonna see how it performs, see how the thermals are managed, uh, but let's just get right into it. Kicking things off in Cinebench R23, you can see that we have about a 200 point increase in performance for the newer model. Now that's a single core performance. As we move on to the multi-core performance, you can see that there is about a 4,000 point increase in performance. Really great results from the CPU, knowing that last year we had half the performance of its equal counterpart mobile CPU. Now we have equal the performance of last year's H series CPUs in a mobile processor with great battery life. Very, very awesome. Speaking of the battery life, these two laptops saw almost identical battery lives, which for me to get double the performance and keep the battery life, is a huge win. So battery life results will come up on the screen now. All these tests are run at half screen brightness. For Photoshop, I run the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. For video editing, I run a 4K Premiere Pro project on repeat until the battery goes dead. And then I'm streaming a YouTube video for streaming and then I use the Passmark productivity benchmark for that. Now moving on to Photoshop, one area I was actually kind of surprised was the Photoshop benchmark. These laptops got very similar results. So although you're seeing much more multi-core performance, as you saw in the Geekbench and Cinebench benchmarks, we only saw a little bit of uptick in the single core performance, which is what Photoshop utilizes most. It does have some multi-core functionality, but as far as the actual raw performance, it's gonna be more focused on single core. So though we saw a big bump in multi-core performance, which will make a big difference for multitasking, which means you, know, you can run Spotify and do web browsing and have Photoshop open and InDesign and maybe be editing some video, all of that at the same time, and you'll still have great performance, any of those singular apps did not get substantially better, except for video editing. This really surprised me. Let's look at video editing. The last year Lenovo Yoga 9i C950 wouldn't even hold a candle to 4K video editing. I, I tried and I was like, it's not even worth it. Whereas the newer model killed it. It was so amazing. So it only had 259 drop frames for a 4K project out of 16,177. That is as good as a H series laptop about a year ago, which like, wow. So that this laptop saw that type of increase in performance. I am very excited because you can take this laptop on the go and have about four hours of battery life while doing 4K video editing. And for this thin and light laptop, it's also gonna run very cool. It's also gonna run very quiet. So I would definitely recommend this laptop if you're a light 4K video editor. If you're somebody who's doing like massive 4K projects or you think, hey, you know, I'm shooting 4K now. I might get into 6K in a little while. I would not recommend this laptop. This is not 6K. This thing would kill it for 1080p and do very well for 4K, but let's stick it there. Let's not try and push it past where I think it is meant for. So great results for video editing. Now, as far as the export times are concerned, it had good export times. They weren't overly phenomenal, but they did very well. So about five minutes and 47 seconds compared to like the latest H series processor from Intel. The latest H series usually does it about two minutes and 38 seconds or so. And so, so comparatively, it gets about half. So comparatively, it takes about twice as long to export out of Premiere Pro as a more high performance CPU would do. But for a mobile processor, woo, doing good. Now, while you're editing video, this laptop will run very cool, around 63 to 58 degrees Celsius, which is amazing. Compared to most laptops on the market, say for instance, like the more high performance ones, they're getting up in the 70s, 80s, and even 90 degrees Celsius range. So this laptop stays very cool. Now it does have a fan noise of about 50 decibels during the performance mode, but then on cooling and power saver mode, you can actually take it down to 45 and even 40 decibels of fan noise, and you still have solid performance. And of course, that button is just right there. Just tap that button and you got your different cooling modes. So this laptop comes with great functionality and great performance. Now, before you think I've hyped up the new model too much, do note, I still really like this laptop. However, all I use this laptop for is some light photo editing, business docs, email, and listening to music really, right? Where the latest model would allow me to do some on-the-go video editing, much better multitasking. I have a larger screen, so a better workflow. And then of course, the massive trackpad 
that I like very much uh, would just give me more room to work as a creator. So overall, big upgrade, not just hype, not just a press release. There's some stuff to talk about here with this laptop. Links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase of either of these laptops. Likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you're gonna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.